Hello, I'm Dana Bergdorf, Fort Worth Assistant City Manager, and I'm honored to join the Tarrant County League of Women Voters in celebrating the centennial of the 19th Constitutional Amendment, which enfranchised some 20 million American women. We are especially grateful to our video sponsors, Ardent Spirit Consulting and the Rick Ward Law Firm. To honor the women in politics today, the League awarded the Democracy Star to six Tarrant County elected officials who are women and were selected by their respective parties for recognition. Our thanks go out to Democratic Party Chair, Deborah Peoples. We invited the awardees to share highlights of their political experiences with our interviewer, Karen Nicholson, a Texan and long serving officer of the League of Women Voters of the United States. On this video, you will meet Beverly Powell, one of our democracy stars. Beverly is a real estate professional who went from serving as a school board president to election as a state senator. She is particularly dedicated to education and proud to serve on the Senate's Texas Education and Higher Education Committees. I am honored to present Karen Nicholson interviewing Beverly Powell. Welcome, Senator Powell. Congratulations on the Democracy Star Award. And thank you for agreeing to talk to us today about what it's like to be a woman elected official. So let's just dive right in and that's a good place to start. What prompted you to run for office in the first place? Well, Karen, I have been a lifelong advocate for public education. And uh, I served first as a school board trustee and I was appointed to that role. And so as a natural consequence of having been appointed, I had to run right away. And uh, I had served for about 10 years previous to that as a university trustee. So I felt really well qualified to do that job. And from, um, from that experience, it, it led to a desire to make a bigger difference even in the public school environment in the state of Texas, which led to the uh, choice to run for state Senate. And so it's really a passion for education, the belief that education is the pathway for all people to an enlightened life that's built on uh, personal well-being and health and economic stability. So uh, those are the things that really led me to want to make a difference, to run for school board in the first place and then later on to run for state senate. So tell me what advice you would give to uh, women running for office or to anybody running for office. You know, I think the most important advice that I can give people is to ground that political aspiration into community involvement, community service, as early as, as it's possible for you. I think it's really important for people to have a sense that, that you are committed to the community, that you are committed to uh, causes that are important to the quality of life for the constituents that you are going to represent. And I think that one of the things that that early public service does is it shows your voter base, it shows your constituents that you are committed to your community, that you are committed to the beliefs that you hold dear. And for me, uh, beliefs about public education. For others, it's the belief in equality and the belief in voter rights and, and all sorts of different issues. Um, but I believe that that foundation of public service is, is really important. Do you think there's any difference as a female running than there is for men or maybe people of color? And, and because you have so, make, so much experience, you can speak on it in two levels, when you first got involved and now in 2020. Well, certainly I do think that there is a difference. And I think that, uh, I think we saw that in um, the presidential election with Hillary Clinton. I think it's important to note that women are, are scrutinized differently that men, than men are in the um, election process and during the campaign environment. You are um, judged 
on the clothes that you wear, on how you deliver your message. You are uh, judged at a, a more intense level and in how you look, how you speak, how you laugh, your sense of humor, every aspect, uh, whether or not you appear to be energetic on a given day. And I think certainly that, that all candidates are scrutinized, yes, but women are scrutinized at a different level. But I'll tell you what I think that also means is that it gives us an opportunity to understand that at the beginning, to make the most of it and to win these elections up and down the ballot and on both sides of the political environment. I had a question in a training posed one time that just stuck with me and I'd like to pose it to you now. When you walk into a room, do you expect to be listened to? You know, certainly I do expect to be listened to. Um, and I, I'll speak to that first. Um, maybe from the today's aspect, as an elected senator representing nearly a million constituents, I understood clearly that the moment I walked into the Senate chambers that my colleagues would listen to me. I, I will tell you this, that I have, uh, I know my own communication style really, really well. And um, what I do always is listen more than I speak. I take the time to uh, understand the, the communication environment that I'm in. I take the time to, to hear people out and to listen, to understand the messages that they are being, that are being uh, communicated and to understand uh, the context of those conversations. And so I'm never the first person to speak. I'm never the person who speaks the longest. Um, but because I wait and calculate my words, um, I've come to understand that people see me as a voice of reason. Um, my colleagues have mentioned that to me after my first session in the Senate, and certainly after 10 years on as a school board trustee and as uh, 20 years as a university trustee. How do you think the women who struggled to get the 19th Amendment passed and ratified would evaluate the role of women today? You know, we've come a long way, baby, haven't we? Since the ratification of the 19th Amendment. Uh, and I think maybe if we were talking to Susan B. Anthony, she would say to us, what took you so long? <laughs> uh, but certainly we are at a very different place in America um, and certainly in the state of Texas. Women are serving in roles of leadership both in our government houses and in corporate boardrooms everywhere at rates that are uh, impressive. Now uh, for me, I uh, was the ninth woman to be elected uh, in this in this session of the state Senate. So we're 10 out of 31, which gives us nearly a third of the Texas State Senate. When I look at that balance, I certainly think that we should be at 50% of the uh, membership in the state Senate and 50% of the membership in the state house. And frankly, I believe that we are on our way to doing that. What's a good thing, a good thing about being a female elected official? I believe that as women uh, who are elected to offices like mine, that we make our judgments based on empathy and based on compassion and based on our very core level of understanding. We are able to set aside any ego that might be associated with decision making and ground our decisions um, in compassion, in empathy, in real understanding of the issues that are important to our constituents, issues that are important to families and children in the educational environment, issues that are important to creating opportunities for young people to go to college or for um, economic development initiatives that we know are going to provide great jobs and help families thrive in our community. And I believe that comes from um, as much of a heart place as a head place. That's an easy 
uh, decision-making process for women. What do you know now that you wish you'd known then? I, I have to say that I wish I had started earlier. Um, I love what I do. I, I never dreamt ever in my life that I would be a state senator. Uh, I imagine that, that if, if you could think back about your 25 year old self or your 30 year old self, um, how many of us would say, I think I aspire to be um, a state official. And it's amazing to me, I'm, I'm constantly amazed when I look around the Senate floor at my colleagues and at the other women who have achieved um, a measure of success in the state Senate. I'm, I am so honored to be here. And, and I wish that I had started it just a little bit sooner so that I could be here just a little bit longer. <laughs> Is there anything you'd like to expand about that you've already talked about? Or is there something you'd like to tell us that we really haven't talked about yet? You know, I think I would like to say just one thing that um, that it's really important for um, for everyone to communicate as much as they can with your elected officials. Um, right now is the time when, uh, during the interim between sessions of the Texas State Legislature, that your leaders in the state of Texas are developing their legislative agenda. And one of the most important tools that we use in developing our legislative agenda is to, to hear from our constituents to hear the important issues that are touching the families who live in your district, to live in all of North Texas and across the state, to understand ways in which we can help you, ways in which we can create new legislation that makes life uh, easier or better for Texans in, in any way. And then I'll leave you with this final thought too, that if there, are problems in life associated with acquiring health care are the issues that we see with the COVID crisis. If you're having trouble with unemployment benefits or if you need business assistance or rental assistance, any of the many ways that our office could, could help to connect you to resources, we are at your service to do that. Thank you so much for sharing your insight about being a female elected official. And thank you for what you do for the people of Texas. We appreciate it very much. Karen, thank you all so much for having me today and thank you for the award. Thank you for watching. And the League thanks the many donors who support its mission of empowering voters and defending democracy.